What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media bringing you another episode of Pokemon Y. Today's episode is number 45 and today we're going to be taking on the last little stretch of Victory Road and then we're going to be tuning up our Pokemon and getting rid of some of these useless HMs that they know like Waterfall and let's see what else. Pyroar knows Strength. We don't want Whiskers to know that. That is just not something that we want in our lives when we're taking on the Elite Four and the champion of the Kalos region. So we're going to be fixing that. Um, and then next time we're going to be taking on the Elite Four. So, before we get too far into this episode, as we're taking on a hiker here, uh, because he is guarding a, a TM that we want. Um, but I would like to remind you guys of our like goal for this video. We're trying to get to 50 likes, so if you would like to show some support, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button right below this video. You know, it really does help out a lot. Your support does mean everything. I know this isn't the most popular series on my channel. But I know a lot of you guys like it, and that's why I try to bring it to you as often as possible. And that's why I'm going to try to continue it a little bit after the Elite Four as well, and do some of the post-game stuff. Not everything, but we'll do some stuff, so we'll have some bonus episodes going on. Anyway, uh, let's get into what's actually happening on the screen right now. Shinobi's coming in against this Golem. Level 56, but we have a 12 level advantage on that, because Shinobi is amazing. And is at level 68. We're going to go for a waterfall. I know it's a physically offensive move. And Golem is super uh, physically defensive. But it's got the sturdy anyway. So it's going to survive. And waterfall, you know, had a chance to flinch and all that jazz. He goes for the heavy slam. That is not very effective. And that really doesn't do that much damage at all. So we can just go for anything. We can do anything we wanted to this Golem. And it would just, it would fall over. Because it's at 1 HP. So we can't stand an extra sensory. It goes down. We get a nice amount of experience from that. Calpay the seconds growing up to level 68 in the process. I think we're ready to take on the Elite Four. I don't think we have to do any grinding at all. I'm not really worried about it. Especially because the Elite Four and Champion in this game are kind of silly. As far as uh, just difficulty level. I really don't think they're that, that uh, hard at all. Uh, we're going to pick up TM02. Which is Dragon Claw. And that is a very useful TM indeed. Unfortunately, uh, we're not going to put it to that much use because our Haxorus already knows Dragon Claw because it learns it via level up. So that is a thing. But I wanted to make sure we got it and, you know, that we didn't have to come back in here. So that's why I ended up teaching Shinobi Waterfall just to, just to do that. And apparently you can get swooped down upon um, while you're in the water. I did not know that was even possible, but Firo is just... He doesn't care. Firo does not care. And I said he, but it's actually a female Firo. She does not care. She does not care at all. So now we can surf through this little tunnel. This is going to take us to the last stretch of Victory Road here. There's a couple of trainers in here. I don't believe there's any items on the sides. Nope. Does not appear as though there are. So we're going to take on these last, I think it's three trainers. And uh, we will we'll see. We'll see if we're ready. It's going to be a test. See if we're ready for the Elite Four. All right, veteran Tameo. He has two Pokemon. He's starting off with a Trevenant. Trevenant, huh? We have uh, Calpay the second out here, and we have an 11, 11 level advantage on this thing. We can Mega Evolve, and uh, a Shadow Claw might not be enough to take this thing out, even as Mega Lucario, because Trevenant is very thick on the physical side. So I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. I know nothing. There's the Shadow Claw, and that actually does take this Trevenant out, so we don't have to worry about getting Willowed or anything else, any other kind of shenanigans going on. Gigalith is going to be coming out next, and it very likely has the Sturdy, so we can't knock it out in one hit. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter what we go out into, because I think everything on my team can two-shot it at least. So uh, that being said, we're going to go into Aurorus here. I know it's going to be weak to the Rock-type stab, so... Stone Edge is going to hurt, but I don't think it can one-shot. I'm pretty sure we outspeed it, too, because we're quite a bit higher than it as far as levels go. So we can go for an Ice Beam, hit it on its weaker special side, and yeah, Ice Beam is going to do well over half. Here comes the Stone Edge, and was that a crit? That was not a critical hit, but it does take us down to like 79 HP. That is crazy. That is power right there. Gigalith, unfortunately, for our opponent, is going to go down to an Ice Beam. And that's going to be it for this battle, so uh, we're looking good here. Aurora's grown up to level 68, and it has just a massive amount of HP. Aurora's must have over base 100 HP. I really don't know what its base stats look like. I know it's very, very slow. It has better special defense than physical defense. And I know its special attack stat, I think, is like base 99, but that's really all I know. 
I know that's that's may, that may be more than most people know. I don't know. I don't know. Aurorus is not a not a Pokemon that get you that gets used a lot, um, competitively and even non-competitively. Just a lot of people don't like its design. I don't understand why. I think its design is beautiful. I think its typing is the issue. But uh, that's just me. Lucario is mega evolving here, and we should be able to take this thing out with a Metal Claw. We get the adaptability boost and all that jazz. Glaceon is going down. We actually get the attack raise as well, so we should be able to stay in here and take on whatever is coming our way. Snorlax. We can definitely stay in on that. We can go for a close combat. That's going to be super effective, and we're actually running out of PP for that, but I'm not worried about it. We have the PP power, O power thing. We really need to use it, and I also have, um, I believe I have elixirs and ethers and all of that kind of jazz, and we're almost done. We're almost done. I'm sure we can just survive to the end of the cave. I think there's one more trainer, actually. I think it's just this guy, and then that's it. Then we can go to Dendemil Town and uh, start deleting some of these HM moves. So this is going to be the last trainer of Victory Road. I'm ready for this challenge. He's got three Pokemon. He's going to start off with the Skarmory. Steel Flying. So our Lucario can't do a whole lot to it. I mean, it can close combat it, and that's a thing. But I don't know if it's worth staying in for that because it probably won't one-shot it. Uh, Skarmory does have Sturdy a lot of times. We can go into Whiskers because that will resist any Steel-type moves that it wants to go for, Steel Wing, or what have you. Uh, it is going to go for the Steel Wing, which wasn't going to be very effective on Lucario anyway, so I'm not sure why it went for that. But it does absolutely nothing to Whiskers. And we can just go for a safe flamethrower. That's going to be super effective. And this Skarmory does have the sturdy, so it's going to survive the hit and get a slash off. Which is neutral, but it's also not stabbed, so it doesn't do that much. We can get another flamethrower off. Skarmory, level 55? I feel like that's kind of low. It's like lower than some of the other Pokemon we've been seeing. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy indeed. But Shinobi's grown up to level 69 already. Haha, <laughs> 69. Alakazam is going to be next. And let's see, I guess we can go into Golurk because, I mean, this Alakazam is going to outspeed. Hopefully he doesn't have Energy Ball or Shadow Ball. That would be nice because that's going to do a lot of damage. But we should be able to one-shot it with a Shadow Punch because Alakazam is so weak on the physical side. He does actually have the Shadow Ball. So that's going to deal a significant amount of damage. Actually, not really that significant at all. More like 30%. That's really not that bad. And Shadow Punch just knocks this Alakazam out cold. Golurk, grown up to level 69. And uh, everybody's, everybody's like in a hurry to grow up to level 69. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on at all. So we're going to switch into our Calpe the Second again here. He's been getting a lot of work in this episode. But he was kind of behind as far as levels go. And we should be able to take on this Umbreon just fine. It's at level 55. We're 13 levels above that. So we don't even need to Mega Evolve, I don't think. I mean, I know Umbreon's very, very bulky, but it's not going to take close combat from a Pokemon that's that much higher than it. So it just it's, it kind of seems like we're a little bit over-leveled right here, but we're not really. We're really not. So we're going to get about $8,000 in Poke Dollars, so that's cool. Because, I mean, I don't know if we're in need of any kind of items. I don't think we are. But it's nice to have the money just lying around. It's, it's just always nice. All right, we made it to the Pokemon League, finally. It's taken forever to get through Victory Road. And I don't think anybody gives us any items in here, but it's, you know, it's worth the check. I want to talk to everybody. First things first, though. We do need to heal up our Pokemon. We're going to need to pick up Hawlucha out of the box because uh, we kind of need it to fly and such. And you don't give us anything. What do you have to say? Anything interesting, please. Say something interesting. No, you have nothing interesting to say. Nobody has anything interesting to say around here, including me. So let's let's find our Hawlucha here. It's at level 52. It's like almost at a viable level to take on these this Elite Four. Like if it was, I don't know, if it was at level 60, I think that would be passable. But it's not. But it's not. So we can uh, go ahead and go for a fly here, and we want to go to, where is it, where is it, where is it, there it is, Dendemil Town, and that's because the move relearner and the move deleter are both located there in a house near the Pokemon Center. So we can go there and get rid of all of our stupid HM moves that we don't want, and like, like strength, for example, like strength. We don't want strength, I don't know why I just walked into the Pokemon Center. 
felt like I needed something in there, but I think I have all the Pokemon that I want with me. And if we don't, we can always go back afterwards. Always, always go back. So we're going to talk to the move deleter first. Or who was I again? Oh, that's right, I'm the move deleter. You've come to make me force your Pokemon to forget a move? Yes, indeed we have. So I'm going to choose Shinobi first. Because we want to get rid of Waterfall. Surf, I, I mean, I guess we can keep that. Because it's a strong water special move, and you know we don't have to worry about doubles. So we're not hitting our opponent or anything, or not our opponent, our partner. So surf is a decent move, but waterfall is really not necessary, and strength is definitely not necessary on a special attacking pyroar. Um, so we're gonna get rid of that. We are going to get rid of that. I don't know what I'm going to give um, this pyroar in in place of that, but let's open up our bag. We can go to our TMs. And, oh, I guess we can do Will-O-Wisp. Why not? Why not just give it Will-O-Wisp? I mean, that can help it out against attackers like ground types and steel types and rock types and all kinds of things. I mean, I guess we don't really need it for steel types because we have flamethrowers. There's no reason to just burn them. But it's it's a nice thought. I guess it's the thought that counts. It's the thought that counts. Uh, let's see here. Let's continue on up our, our TM area. Uh, we've got Stone Edge... And Snarl, Sludge Bomb, Struggle Bug. Nah, I'm not seeing anything. We can do Snarl. That will work for Whiskers. Snarl will definitely work for Whiskers. Because it decreases special attack, and it's actually a special attacking move. Um, I mean, I guess we could do Dark Pulse. Do I, I don't even know if I have Dark Pulse, to be honest. Um, but we're going to teach it Snarl, because why not? Why the heck not? Um, Shadow Ball, Rock Tomb, Rock Smash, Rock Slide, Rock Polish, Return, Rest, Protect, Power Up Punch. I feel like I missed a lot of important TMs. Um, I know Roost is on Route 8, and now that we have Surf, we can get that, so we'll be getting it at some point. Uh, Hidden Power. We're going to teach Hidden Power to Shinobi because he has the HP Fire, if you remember. We checked when we uh, reached, what was that, Anistar City for the first time. I was just checking my Pokemon. I'm like, oh, this Greninja has HP Fire. What? What? I have not been able to breed one that has HP Fire, but of course my in-game Greninja with, like, no IVs at all <laughs> has HP Fire. How silly. How silly of me. Or how silly it is that that happens. I do actually have Dark Pulse, but we'll just keep Snarl. Why not? Uh, brick Break, Bulk Up. Yeah, we're just going to uh, head back to the Pokemon Center, actually. Actually, I'm actually I'm pretty happy with HP fire. That is this is not the right direction. What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm pretty happy with the HP fire on the Greninja because that just gives it some extra coverage against, you know, grass types and steel types and things like that. I mean, fire is actually a pretty good offensive typing. The only reason it's not really good defensively is because it's weak to the uh, common stealth rocks, and we're, that's just competitively. Uh, let's open up our bag again. And we have all of our Pokemon now because I got rid of that darn Halucha, which is our HM slave. And uh, let's see, strength. We're going to go for Stone Edge. We can teach Golurk Stone Edge because why not? Rock type coverage is actually pretty decent against opposing ice types that would be coming in to do uh, super effective damage. We can get rid of Iron Defense. There's literally no reason in the world for this Golurk to have Iron Defense. It's already slow as balls anyway. It's not outspeeding anything. So it's already going to have to take a lot of damage uh, just to get the Iron Defense up, and it doesn't have recovery, so that is also a thing. That is indeed a thing. Shadow Ball, what would I teach that to? I guess nothing. I guess nothing. Sleep Talk doesn't work. We're not going to do Rest Talking at the Elite Four. That is just, that is not happening at all. But we could teach Swords Dance to Lucario, but uh, I don't know that that's worth it. I think Power Up Punch might be a better alternative. Because at least it deals damage, it gets the stab, and you know we have the adaptability when we Mega Evolve, which we most likely will be doing in the uh, Elite Four battle. So we can get rid of Home Claws, actually, because I don't have any moves that have less than like 95% accuracy, so I, I don't need to be worried about accuracy as much. So I think Power Up Punch is a good move to have. Looking at these other moves here, I guess we could go for the Grass Knot on the Greninja. We don't have the HP Grass. There's no way to get any other Grass-type move on a Greninja unless you want to do the HP Grass, but since we have HP Fire, let's see, what do I want to get rid of? Extra Sensory doesn't really do a whole lot. I mean, it's good on fighting types. I think I'll just keep uh, what we have for now. 
I was thinking about the Grass Knot, but you know what? I, I actually think that the Extra Sensory is better because it's going to deal more consistent damage, has 80 base power. kind of like it. I kind of like it. So is there anything else that we can really do here, or are we going to just call it an episode already? We're only like 15 minutes in. This is going to be like the shortest episode in quite a long time, if that is the case. Sludge Bomb, Sleep Talk, Shadow Ball, Shadow Ball. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything that's really catching my eye here. Poison Jab, Payback. Pyroar has such a good um, physical move pool. And actually, I think it gets like Moxie as its hidden ability or something like that. But its, it's physical attack is just terrible. I think it might actually be like base 50 something. It's, it's that bad. It's in that range. Uh, so I think we're done teaching moves here. So we're going to take the Lucky Egg off of our Aurorus, and I think we are ready to take on the Elite Four. So that's what's coming your way in the next episode. We got everybody around, like, level 68 to 69. And by the time we're done the first Elite Four battle, or maybe even the second, depending, I think we're actually going to have a Pokemon at level 70. Because we've got, like, it looks like half our team is, like, 68, the other half is 69. So we're just, we're in a good position here. We are definitely in a good position. We're going to keep the Hall Lucha in our party because we need to fly back to Pokemon League. We're actually going to do that right now. Right now. And uh, then we... I uh, know that's Cloud City. I always think that the Pokemon League is, like, in the corner somewhere. I don't know why. I just feel like it belongs there. It's just, like, I don't know, like, off by itself in its own little area because it's supposed to be, like, a really big deal. Why is it just, like, I don't know, at a random location on the map? I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't understand anything because I am a... I don't know. I don't know what I am. But we're going to deposit our Hawlucha, bring Golurk back into the party, and we are set to take on the Elite Four of the Kalos region. Or Kalos, depending on how you want to say it. I've had people yell at me for saying it both ways. So I think it's actually pronounced Kalos in the anime. Not that that's official by any means, but that's just... I don't know. I guess food for thought. So that's going to be it for this time, guys. I want to thank you all for watching, as always. I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode, even though it was a little bit on the boring side. Next time is going to be very exciting, though. So there's that. And also, do not forget to uh, click that thumbs up button right below this video if you would like to show your support, because it does, it does, does, does mean a lot. And I do appreciate uh, all the support that you guys give me. I really do. And I'm looking forward to this next episode. So I hope I will see you then. But until then, game on.